Is you're from Connecticut originally, from right? From Connecticut, yeah. So it's like a very natural. Uh, <laughs> Feel like that's where we evolved to, right? Uh-huh. From like Connecticut to Fratboro, Murray Hill, and then like <laughs> you get old enough that you're like, I can't say I live in Murray Hill anymore. So you tell people you live in Kips Bay. You know, Bay. but like <laughs> either way, I feel like Murray Hill and Kips Bay—they have so much going on over there. And why do people give it such a hard time? Like, I, especially people from Connecticut, and you know that people give it a hard yes. time. Yes, I was like the biggest proponent of the Murray Hill Renaissance like mm-hmm. a couple of years back and I was like documenting it on social I was like we're coming into our own we're gonna be a cool neighborhood like, this is the place was, to be yeah I was like it's the new west village and everyone was like you're out of your mind <laughs> it's the new west village <laughs> I love it yeah. well there is you know what there is a ton of stuff to do there so yeah. being in that it yes it is kind of the west village people go to bars in the right. west village all the time people go to bars in Murray Hill Kips Bay yeah I mean not exactly like the crowd you always want to be hanging out with happens to sure. be in Murray Hill but like you know, great restaurants. Mm-hmm. Curry Hill's right there. Yes. I mean, Absolutely. very convenient. Grand Central to get back to Connecticut. Right. You know, exactly. So important. you live just by yourself? No, I live with my boyfriend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Convenient. So yeah. like for the most part, I mean, that's the place to be when you're young and how old yeah. are you, by the way? 29. Okay. So I'm 30. And like, that's the, friends. that's the place that, um, I feel like a lot of my friends still live and enjoy. Yeah. yeah like I moved there right out of college and then I just Never left. It's so conven- mm-hmm. It's just so convenient. It really is. It's it close gets to everything. Such a bad rap. It really does. Where'd you go to college? I went to Middlebury. Oh, in Vermont. In Vermont. Okay, yes. cool. So like that's where the really smart, small liberal arts college <laughs> kids went to uh, college. It's definitely small school. liberal arts. How about where did okay. you go? So I went to UConn. Okay. I played tennis there. That was like the main reason that I incredible. went to UConn. Yeah. Well, I mean, the reason I went there was because the basketball team and the uh, football team, soccer team, they had such great sports programs. Yeah. It was like, usually at colleges, they don't typically have, I mean, not at all colleges, they don't have like tennis teams, but right. UConn had a tennis team just because it was supported so much from like the money that was coming in from football and basketball and it was close to home. So it was either between like playing tennis right away at UConn on the team or going to Miami and having to wait like a little bit longer, but Got I still it. love Miami. My dad's down there like yeah. for the most part, uh, six months the out of the year. Yeah. Love Miami. When's the last time you were down there? Uh, right before the pandemic. Oh, yeah, so I haven't been okay. back. Um, okay. But I feel like an alter ego Shannon gets to come out in Miami. Really? Like a very different. Yeah, life is just different down there. Yeah, you're it on is. the beach. There's you're no COVID down there. Whatever you want, sure, COVID right. is fake. You can like go. <laughs> you can go like. For, I mean, if you're a guy, of course, you just go shirtless into the Walgreens, and nobody bats an eyelash. No one cares. It's beautiful. Like, you can literally wear glitter and be like, "This is my <laughs> outfit." Like, <it's> <laughs> like glitter can, under the eyes. Yeah, or just like anywhere. Really. Yeah, it's super fun. I love it down there. And then also, I mean, like going down there when I visit my dad for a few days here and there. I mean. It's just not as great as New York, though. There's just no. way too much going on in New York for me to settle for a yeah. Florida. And I hate saying that. I'm not, like, talking <laughs> shit about Miami or anything. I love Miami, but, like, it's just New York or bust for me. L.A. is okay. Do you like L.A.? You've been to L.A.? I mean, like, sure. Like, yes, yeah, they have sure. palm trees. Sure. Great. But too like, much driving for me. Too much driving. I don't know. They're, like, I don't want to play into that stereotype, right? But, like, people are just not... In New York, you know where you stand with everyone. And sure. sometimes... They hate you, yeah. but at least you know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm Team New York for sure. Okay, so um, you grew up in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Went to high school in Connecticut. Yeah. Where'd you go to high school? Loomis Chafee. Loomis Chafee. Is that, school. Is that um a bo- <laughs> is that a boarding school? It is. And you went to boarding school there. I didn't board. Okay. So you that were. Loomis is like fifty fifty day students boarders. So okay. I wasn't like the weird kid that didn't live at school. Okay. Um. Oh, so it w- yeah. So it was weird to live at school, or wasn't weird to live no, at school? No, it was. It was totally normal. It's just like at like some of like the the better schools, right? Like, I don't know. There's a lot of schools that um, are almost entirely boarding. And if you're a day student, you're like a total weirdo, right? Yeah. So Loomis is pretty 50-50. So I don't know, like my friends, half of them lived at home, half of them lived at school. So did you spend like a lot of weekends just hanging out at school? Yeah. I mean, I spent so much time at school, especially once I got my driver's license and I could like take my border friends to Dunkin' Donuts. That was like a really big deal. That was the go-to, right? That made me super cool. I had Uh access to coffee. So So where um, (laughs) did the kids who were like boarding, where were they from for the most part? Like mostly just other parts of Connecticut. Oh, really? And they (laughs) just decided to stay there? I mean, it's it's an international school. Like we definitely had people from overseas. We had people from all over the country. But it is definitely like... New England focused, okay. but too Boston far to commute. Ish. Yeah. Okay. So like people who lived, it's like up north in Connecticut. So people who lived like closer to New York, a lot of people who grew up in New York yeah. would come and live at school. Would it be anyone from like the West Coast or not really? It's just like kind of a New England based. Yeah. I mean, there definitely were people, just not as much. It, it's definitely more, I feel like prep schools are like regional. 
Yeah. Like there are prep schools and boarding schools on the West Coast and they attract West Coast people. Yeah. I guess. But like not really international students. Definitely some international students. Oh really? Students. Okay. Yeah. Which was really cool. Like yeah. it was an awesome it was an awesome experience. And I I definitely was not ready to like leave home at fourteen. I was yeah. like way too not independent enough. Was it like freshman so year it was great. of high school. Yeah. I've always kind of wondered why parents would like send their kids away. Great for question. Four years, and then also on top of that, another four years yeah. for college, right? My parents could never. Uh -huh. Did you? Did, were, I mean, were there kids at your school that maybe like suffered from being away from their parents, and they were like not happy to be there, like homesick? Like I used to. I remember I went to tennis camp for the first time for two weeks. Like I cried every single day, even though I love tennis. Like I cannot <laughs> I be away be from home. my parents. Yeah, literally. No, I Was feel there the same any way. of that. I mean, there must have been, yeah. right? I just didn't I just, see just, it. Okay. I wasn't didn't there show at night. I didn't cry right? in front of people. Right, yeah, right, right. people didn't come up to me sobbing, mm -hmm. but. I'm sure they must have, like, I could have never. I, like, I still call my mom, like, six times a day. Yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, it's so much to learn there. You are a copywriter right now, correct? Yeah. Okay, so both my sisters are copywriters. Amazing. I figured you were going to probably ask which company. I don't know, okay. but I'll, I'll let All you know right. when, I, when I can I figure will that let out you afterwards. Off the hook so your but, sisters don't kill you. Yeah, so what is, um, what is your kind of day to day look like in terms of, like, you know, what you're doing on social media? And then also, I see you're doing spots. You're doing a lot. So yeah. what, is, what does your day kind of look like? It's, I mean, it's just a lot. I work a lot. Um, but it's cool because, like, honestly, all of it I like. Even my job as a copywriter is really creative. I'm, like, writing commercials. I'm on set for commercials. I'm, okay. We do, like, experiential at my company. So, like, we're putting together, like, live experiences that you can go to. So, it's honestly very fun. Mm -hmm. um, so, that's a good part portion of my day. Work from home, not having to commute, being able to, like, be more flexible with my schedule is the only reason I can do any of oh, this. Oh, wow. So when did you start working from home? Like pandemic? Yeah. And okay. that's when I took, that's when I started doing social media. Okay. Because I had been doing stand up before, whatever, loved it. All the clubs closed. I let, I went back to Connecticut. I wasn't a true New Yorker. I didn't stick it, stick it out in the pandemic. But, okay. Um, well, at that point, were you and your boyfriend living together or was it like just you no. and a roommate? Okay. So it was, was I was, you? I was living alone at that time. Okay. He was living with a roommate. We both like went home. He's from Minnesota. So, okay. and he went to Minnesota. I went to Connecticut. I was like, see you in two weeks. Yeah. Like, the whole wait, world. Wait, wait, wait. Everyone was saying, see you in two um, weeks. <laughs> but then it was crazy because, okay, so we started dating like not long before COVID started. Uh -huh. Like only oh, a couple wow. months. Oh, wow. That's a great test, by the way. Yeah. Because, so <laughs> we had been dating for like a couple months. We're uh -huh. like, oh my God, you're the best. Right, like right, in right, that right, phase, right? right? Totally. Then we became long distance for three months, which was like, Super hard, but also like, let me get to know you on a deeply personal level because all we can do is talk on the phone. We can't like go to karaoke and like just be goofballs. And then he came and lived with me and my parents for a month. And then I went and lived with him and his parents for a month. And it was like baptism by fire. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and obviously it worked out. It's been great. Like we, a friend of ours coined the term turbo dating. It yes. feels like we've oh been dating God, totally. much longer than we have because of that. How did you guys meet? Uh, we Minnesota. met on Hinge. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Post. Okay, yeah. excellent. Nice. <laughs> yeah. There's hope out there. You moved to the city after college? Yeah. Just like right after college? Like the week after. And you were, at, and you've been at the same job since then or no? No. So I, I moved here to be an actress. Yes. And that was like the only thing I was doing. I sold denim at Bloomingdale's. Nice. Which was terrible. Wait, so what is, it? so you sell, you're selling jeans, right? So, yeah, jeans. I think Sorry, my we sister call it also Anna. was doing that, selling okay, denim so and she said it like that. Yeah, friends. literally, you guys need to meet. I think she came to um, one of the shows that you were on, one of oh, the Ted cool. Jones comedy yes. shows, by the way, guys, Ted Jones comedy show. As you're listening to this, we have Shannon next Tuesday, March 29th, Ted Jones Comedy Show, 7 p.m. That's going to be very exciting. So check the link in this YouTube video and uh, we'll get you guys to that show. But yes, anyway, my sister um, uh, loved you, of course. <laughs> um, so wait, what did I just say before that, before the ad? Bloomingdale's. Bloomingdale's. <laughs> Tell me about denim. <laughs> oh my God, it's, just, it's impossible. I mean, like just working, I working in the service industry, man, like tip your waiters, be nice to your totally. retail staff. Yeah, like say that. it's just a nightmare. And, you know, people aren't, that nice you work entirely on commission and like people don't shop in store that much anymore so you're like making no money you're on your feet all day you're like exhausted um it was just like really unfulfilling obviously um and so I you know and also being an actress like predominantly just as an actress you're always waiting for somebody else to give you permission to do what you want to do so what I love about stand-up or social media or anything that I'm writing it's all, I have all the agency, right? I get to be the one who says, all right, I want to make a video about 
Manhattan woman or I want to do this. Whereas with acting, you need someone to say, okay, I want you to audition. I want to cast you and I want you to do it this way. Which when that's your only source of creative anything is not that exciting. Mm -hmm. So you feel very like, you feel very hapless. So I was like, you know what? I want to focus more on writing. I I worked at Bustle, which is a blog for a little while. Um, And then I, you know, I didn't love editorial. So then I steered into advertising and I've been in advertising since then um, at two different agencies at different points. And you find that um, the job that you're at right now is something that you want to pursue long term or do you want to continue to do like social media and stand up and then, you know, put that um, ahead of that? Yeah, I mean, that would be like, that's the dream, right? To be to be the stand up, the headliner touring. Yeah. Um, But, you know, right now I just I don't feel that like they're super mutually exclusive. And that's a fallacy that I think is exists in our world that like if you're not 100 percent doing stand up you can't do stand up and mm-hmm. i just like i don't really subscribe to that philosophy i mm-hmm. feel like the more well rounded my life is the better my comedy is mm-hmm. um do i wish i had you know infinite time to put towards comedy yes do i like having a salary also yes yeah. so it's like you know well i mean on tiktok you must be doing pretty well though so how did that how did that start and how did you get to a level where you're at like what i mean what are you at hundreds of thousands of followers yeah. right now yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy. I feel really lucky. It felt like sort of like lightning in a bottle. It uh-huh. was this like this sort of magic formula of having the right content at the right time. So pretty early on in the pandemic, I would say like mid-summer of that 2020, like the first year. Yeah. Um I just missed doing stand up so much. I'd like tried to do a couple Zoom shows and I don't How, know. How's that? Just hard. It's so funny like the other comics we've had on the show, like everybody is kind of saying the same thing. Because for the most part, all the people that are watching you, like all the heads on the screen, their microphones are mute, uh, yes. muted, right? <laughs> so right. you just see them going. Yeah. So you don't, <laughs> like you don't see even know anyone. They could be fake laughing. Yeah. You don't know if anyone's laughing. Uh-huh. There's no feedback. You're like sitting in your living room. Like I just, it was hard. And it was like, you know, the shows I did, I was really grateful that I got to do them. But I was just like, I don't know. This isn't scratching my itch for comedy. Um, and I had in my set, or actually, no, prior to that, I had been toying around with like, what would Carrie Bradshaw say about this pandemic? That's like very popular internet fodder. People love to imagine what Carrie Bradshaw would have to say about the world. Um, And I had put something on my Instagram story and like my friends really liked it. So I was like, what if I just put it on TikTok? Um, And TikTok was amazing because I felt like I, I felt like I could do whatever I want and no one was going to judge me because I didn't have any followers yet. So there was like a fear of putting something on my Instagram where like people from my hometown followed me, you know, and having them be like, who does she think she is putting out this video, which is just like, you know, layers of insecurity that I should like, you know, work through, but who has time for that? Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) But yeah, so I went to TikTok and I put up this Carrie Bradshaw post and it was just like, at the time felt incredibly viral now feels like pretty standard, but still was really exciting. Um, And that just like, I got the bug, right? I wanted to do more and more TikToks. Um, and so then I have in my stand-up set a, a lot of content about being from Connecticut. So I was like, what if I made Connecticut Girl a character and I did this Connecticut Girl on a date? Um, and that really took off. So then I was like, well, the only thing I know better than Connecticut is Manhattan. So what if I did Manhattan Woman nice. on a date? And then it just snowballed from there. I did Vermont, so I went to school. I did Boston because everyone that went to Middlebury was from Boston. Um, my boyfriend lived in Chicago for a while, so I like tapped his brain and did Chicago and like, and then I just was like, okay, cool. This is character videos on social is something I do now. Do you find that having a niche has put you to a level where as other people sometimes who don't really have like a specific vision has gotten you like consistently followers? Yeah. It's, it's consistent. interesting. Yeah. When I started and I really did that niche, I did the on a date and I did like six of them in a row. It was growing crazy and everyone was like, do this date, do this date, do this date. And what I actually consciously decided was I don't want to be the on a date girl. I want to be able to do more. I want to have more um, variety. And, and what's fun about that is they were all very different characters. So it wasn't like I was just doing one character in a variety of settings. I got to put on a lot of different personas. So that felt like variety, but then I just started doing other content. And, you know, sometimes I think if I continue to just put out more on a date videos, I might grow faster, but I'm just trying to like have a breadth and depth of, of content on there. And I think 
I think it helps in the long run because you you find different audiences for different things. How comfortable are you on stage right now in terms of length of a set? Like how how long do you think you could be if somebody just put you up there and was like, all right, go as long as you can? Yeah, that's a great question Um, because I'm trying to figure that out for myself right now. Um, Definitely solidly like 20, 25. I'm trying to like work up to like a really solid 30, which I, I just don't. I think I could do it, but there would definitely be jokes in there that I'm like, well, that's not an A plus joke. Um, and my goal, you know, for the end of like my goal in 2020, is it 2022? What year? I don't even know yeah. what year it is. <laughs> my goal for 2022 <laughs> is to work to that hour. Will I get okay. there? Who knows? Uh-huh. Um, I have to sit down and write, but. <laughs> so what is your favorite comedy club right now? If you could say, um, you know, I do a lot at Stand Up New York. I really like them there. Um, I, I know them and I like their vibe. So I'm enjoying that. I'm putting up a show there. Nice. So, Tell us about it. Yeah. First Saturday of every month, 5.30 p.m., Shannon Fiedler and Friends. Nice. Um, so At Stand Up New York. Stand Up New York, Upper okay. West Side. Cool. Everyone, the home of all comedy. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I love that club. It's really great. And then, yeah, I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm still getting my footing. I'm, I'm not in a lot of clubs yet. I, I haven't been um, on stage at a lot of the different clubs. So I'm, I'm just trying to get up on more and meet more people and, and find those opportunities. Do you find that people have noticed you from your TikTok maybe more so than your stand-up? 100%. Okay. Any, like, luck I have or success that I have in stand-up, like, getting booked is through TikTok. And I'm just using that to my advantage. You know, I... If I reach out to someone and I'm like, hey, would love to be on your show, I always make sure I do it from, like, my account. Where right, they right, can, right. like, You know, at least, you know, you don't want to put someone on a show, right, if you don't know if they're funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, like, yeah, yeah, part of it. So I'm like, all right, they can vet my content, and I don't have necessarily a ton of stand-up on there, but they can at least get a feel for my personality. So you've been doing stand-up, though, for years, or did you, like, were you doing acting and then you switched to stand-up, or were you doing kind of both at the same time? I was doing acting, then I took a long hiatus, and then I was doing stand-up. I probably doing, started doing stand-up like 2018, so relatively newish because with the pandemic break. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends on who you talk to. I feel like people have all – it's the same thing where people are like, you're not a real New Yorker till. 10 years uh-huh. and people do that with stand-up Well, I, you know, I, I love it when people come to New York. I have nothing Same. bad to say for anybody who comes to New York. It's a great place. And like, where else are you supposed to be in the entire <laughs> world? You know, like Connecticut's good too. Connecticut was but fun. But it's not New York. Right. That's true. But like going to um, Yukon, I'm not sure if you know, like stores is yeah. in the middle of nowhere. Yes. So it's like 30 minutes from Hartford. That was like the closest city. Uh, do you find that, you know, growing up in Connecticut is just super different from your time here in New York or have you adjusted? Yeah. Oh, I've adjusted for sure. Um, I definitely did not know how to live in a city when I first moved here. What was, what was the kind of stuff you were doing? Just like, oh my God, <laughs> just like could not navigate a subway to okay. just save my life. Yeah. Like just no understanding of like how to be alert on a sidewalk and like know where people are. Look both ways. Yeah. I mean, I interned here uh, between my junior and senior year of college and I, like I'm surprised. Like I ate lean cuisine. That was the only thing I <laughs> ate. Like I walked like two miles to work because I didn't know how to navigate the subway system. Well, it's a lot easier (laughs) now with the Google maps. Yeah. Like you cannot get lost really. Yeah. You can like navigate any city. Like back then when we were, when we were kids, it was MapQuest. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, but no, now I feel like I, you could drop me in any city in the world. I mean, I think who knows, but I feel like I could figure it out because I know how to function here. But like my friends who live in Boston, I don't think it's reciprocal, right? Like when they come to New York, they feel overwhelmed. Or when my boyfriend moved here from living in Boston and Chicago, he was like, the city's so, it's just too big. Mm-hmm. But then like, in like two months, he was like, okay, I'm a New Yorker. Like, It's I also get so it. quick to get everywhere in New York. Yeah, it's so intuitive once you realize what it's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. So in New York for the rest of your life? I mean, like, I don't know. I grew up in Connecticut. I'm, mm-hmm. like, probably going to be a suburban mom okay. someday, right? <laughs> like, that's just, like, in You like the big house, Connecticut, yeah. the grass, yeah, the exactly. good schools. Yeah, exactly, like a lawn. But uh-huh. I just, like, I can't really imagine myself in another city. I just don't know how you go from New York to another city. I don't think you really do. Yeah, it's, it's such like a biased place opinion. Where you, yeah, this is, like, the place where you end up. Yeah, for sure. Do you have stuff in other cities that maybe people are finding you through your TikTok? I don't yet, and that's, like, something, huh. that's also something I'm trying to do is figure out how, like, when I want to start going to other cities and I've honestly, all my friends are, <laughs> we've had so many weddings over the past couple of years oh, that yeah, I feel I like anytime I leave New York city, it's for someone else's love. Like destination weddings or you know, weddings well, close by? Like very few close by uh, a couple, yeah. like I have one upstate and then like I had a couple in long Island last year, but, um, just like, I know people who are spread out. And so 
we've just been like all over the country. I feel like for for what I mean, you know, you're thirty. You're at that age, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm invited. Thankfully, I haven't been invited to so many. And okay, the ones I have been invited to, like, I'm very close with the people, so Good. I'm happy about that. Yeah. I think sometimes people just like get overwhelmed by wedding yeah. invites, and like you can't say no. And sometimes you got to say no if it's like a far away sometimes wedding. Sometimes you got to say no. Have you said no? Uh, yes, but mostly because I was double booked right. with another oh, wow. wedding. <laughs> yeah, my boyfriend has like. A lot of friends, okay. like so many friends. Well, that's good. Where did he it's go great. to college? He went to Boston College. Okay. Yeah. BC, nice. And they roll deep. They like, they're such, they're the best. They're like such a great, large group of friends, mm -hmm. but they are all over the country. So we have been all over the country, um, which is cool. It's fun. Uh -huh. And it's same tiring. age as you? Uh, yeah. He's a year younger than me. Oh, okay. And yeah. I bet it is tiring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> literally. Cougar. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, how does it feel to have an older girlfriend? He's like, by literally four months. Like, well, <laughs> I'm more You're like 29 than and a half. You yeah. just turned 29. Exactly. I feel like you do great if you started a podcast. You think? Yeah. Oh my why God, not? It's so intimidating to me. I feel like you're a great talker. People want to watch you and watch you speak, watch you do comedy. You should just talk. Hop on the, I'll, t I'll teach you how to do it. Whatever. Right. You just plug this thing in. Start it recording. Looks like a spaceship. To yeah, me. a little like bit. I'm it took me a while. It took me a while to learn how to use it for real. So, like the first, <laughs> um, like sixty episodes, we had a producer. Shout out producer Pat, and he was just in charge of basically like chopping up all the footage and putting together the audio and stuff. But like eventually, like probably five or six months in, I could do an episode alone. But it took a while. Yeah, yeah. It's, a little intimidating. It's definitely scary. But and TikTok you're is intimidating. Questions. Oh, thank you. You're very well. Like, I'm you're trying, but you're, but you're, but you're, yeah, you're, but you're, you're um giving me. I'm not you're giving me good up, information. No, it's perfect. <laughs> not shutting up. That's the that's the wrong way. Also, you can have a sip of that water. Don't be shy. Oh, for sure. Don't get intimidated. All we right. also have a listener email today that I want to get to. Oh. Um, it involves. Now that I remember it, okay. It is. T -t -t -t, let me actually pull it up on my cell phone. Give me one second. We'll cut this part out. <laughs> Okay, well, you guys didn't notice that any time lapsed, but we had to pause for a moment. Okay, so Ted, where are good places for workout classes in New York City? Do you use ClassPass? That was actually one of the questions uh, I when I saw it. it. I was I like, do you use ClassPass? Do I use ClassPass? Do you? Pass? No, I tried it once. Um, it, I don't know. It was cool. I don't yeah. know, like years ago. Me um, too. I love Rumble. Because I'm the boxing basic. or the working out one? <laughs> <laughs> the boxing. <laughs> There's something I don't think so that's so basic. Or okay, maybe I the have, boxing one. I have is. pink no. boxing gloves. Did you buy it from them? No. I like, oh, I like bought them online? on Amazon. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Love um, Amazon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Basic. Yeah. Shout out Amazon. <laughs> Great company. Wait, so you have, you uh, like a Rumble person. What do you I do? Like, like once, uh, what? Once a week or more? More? No. You have no. like a oh hundred pack? I'm like once a month. Oh, if that. once a month. No, I got really into like, so. I like got into working out at home nice. over COVID and okay. now I'm just like, why would I leave my apartment? But I'm starting to be like, okay, I miss classes. So right. I've gone to rumble since I've been back. Um, I'm, I like yoga. I haven't found a great yoga studio in really? the city yet that I I feel love. like there are so many. Yeah. If give, anybody has yeah, one, you got to give DM Shannon me, suggestions. Please. Yeah, for real. Um, Orange Theory, is that kind of like rumble? No, that's not so. boxing. Yeah, it's not boxing. It's just like hard. Like, Berries is the hardest Berries workout. Berries Camp. Oh, my God. I haven't done that. Okay. It's like death wish. It's, it's, it's so, I <laughs> mean. Because you're doing the, the treadmill, and then what? You're doing push-ups yeah. and stuff. And you're just like sprint. Like, these people's treadmills are moving faster than I well, realized I mean, isn't it, Isn't it decided on how fast you go or no? Yeah, like but like the people the around you are like oh, right. going so fast, and you're like, I yeah, you're like, am slow so down. out of shape. What's the favorite? What's your favorite? Um, I guess restaurant in the Murray Hill Kips Bay area. Oh God, Interesting in question. Murray Hill Kips Bay. You're like I love Fresh and Co. <laughs> yeah, Fresh and Co. Not Fresh bad. Fresh and Chipotle <laughs> and Starbucks. Um, oh God, that's a great question. There, I mean, there really are good restaurants. Sure. Um, best sushi. Sushi Rayusi is like sushi Rayusi. Yeah, I Interesting forgive me if name. I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> it's so good. I think you are. Wait, so it's where like it's like closer up near Grand Central. I think it's on like 39th Street. Oh, okay, and it's delicious. So like maybe kind of Bryant Park? No, no, because it's like it's it's, e like it's on third, third. Ave. Okay. Yeah, it's between. I think it's between second and third, maybe. Okay. Yeah, a lot of really good, sushi good sushi up there. Yeah, really good sushi. That used to be like my favorite food before I went vegan. Now uh, I just like oh, right, I, you're vegan. I don't really have sushi that much anymore because it's kind of boring. I'm like avocado yeah. roll, cucumber roll, sweet potato roll. Or how unexciting. I don't even know. There's like one more roll that mushroom. I can have that's not exciting. Yeah, share mushroom. I haven't had actually. That's a good one. Oh. I'll write that down. Yeah. Um, but they're not mushroom. that exciting. Yeah. 
you know, so where do you go? If, as I you're like a the vegan? spicy tuna roll. I like the California roll. I mean, Uber Eats, there's a lot, you know, yeah. like, um, you got places like uh, Veggie Grill, Red Bamboo, oh. Willow. Uh, uh, Have you been to Jaja Jaja? Ja. Of course, I've been to Jaja Jaja, ja, right? The Mexican like, place. Yeah, yeah I'm a huge a carnivore, yeah, yeah, but like that, that place. Okay. So good. Yeah, so Nachos good. are my favorite food. Oh, so. me too. Love nachos. Oh my God, Who doesn't best. love nachos? And, the and then the vegan ones. cheese. Yeah, yeah they vegan have good cheese stuff. is great. Yeah, I don't mind. Be- so what is stopping you maybe from going vegan if you were to go vegan? Oh, that, I mean, I just, I love meat. meat. Yeah, like chicken fingers. Chicken fingers. A hamburger. Amazing hamburger, sure. I'm saying really unhealthy. I have no, but I mean, those are the best foods. Those are what people <laughs> yeah, say that like right? will stop them from right. going vegan. Because you can just, yeah. you can have french fries, obviously, yeah. nachos. If you just mix up maybe the impossible meat or right. whatever that is. I mean... Um, I but, feel like I would be so unhealthy without meat. Like most of, I really? feel like if I wasn't eating meat, I would just eat carbs. Like I would exclusively live on carbs. I mean, like I guess there's vegetables. But no, but yeah, I'm I'm like a pretty basic vegan. Like I'll eat anything. That's yeah. it, well, it, as long as it's vegan, I'll right. eat anything. Okay. So like beans, chickpeas, yeah, seitan, tofu. Mm. Stuff like that. I'm yeah. a pretty boring eater, but I do feel yeah. better if you yeah. wanted to try it for 72 right, hours. I wouldn't I tell you it. not to. Okay, 72 hours. Yeah, try. Right. Yeah, you might feel better actually. You sleep better, like breathe a little bit better. Oh. And if you notice, you go to Rumble, your punches are better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, so do you not eat eggs? No. God, I could, That's a funny I, question, too. People oh always God. ask me that about being vegan. I eat so many eggs. Sure. How do you. Oh. That would, see, that would be hard. Well, for they me. have just egg. Have you heard of this? It's like in the little container and you just, no, you don't actually, you put it on the, um, I'm so the stove first. You put it on the hot plate or whatever. And then it turns into an egg, I guess. And it supposedly, it an supposedly it tastes like yeah. egg. And in um, the UK, by the way, uh, for this month, the month of March, right? We're in March. Yes. We don't know the date or year. <laughs> March. So for the month of March, Burger King in the UK is going fully vegan. I don't know if Whoa. you saw that. So like Impossible Burgers, the chicken nuggets are vegan. Oh, cool. um, I guess the milkshake, everything is vegan. Wow. So, I mean, the movement is coming to the it point is. where we got to stop eating so much meat. Yeah, just cause for it, sure. Because of what it's doing to the planet. Yeah. I mean, you're right. You're super right. Yeah. I'm being very selfish with my uh, chicken fingers. <laughs> you know what? I You're not the only one. Don't worry. Yeah. And also chicken fingers, some of the best food also when so I was not good. vegan. Um, bacon, egg, and cheese also. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's stuff like when I walk into a deli and I yeah. smell that in the morning, like I'll be like, oh, that does really smell good. That would good. be nice. Yeah. Usually I'll just have like fruit for breakfast now, which is yeah. not so fun, but it, like it, it does what it needs to do until like right. 12 and then I'll have lunch dinner whatever yeah. okay so you're like you you probably feel better and yeah healthier. yeah for the most part i, yeah. I guess i do but like I, the whole reason i went vegan is because i had jaw surgery like two and a half years ago that's why i have like a scar on my oh, neck okay. so i couldn't eat meat couldn't chew oh, and God. then once like i came back to being able to eat stuff it was like very soft fruit uh oatmeal beans God. stuff like that so i like i started it just because like it was inconvenient to eat right. things that were hard to chew and then yeah. now I'm okay. just like, I'm, I'm here now. Okay, that's an interesting trajectory. A lot of Uber Eats for you or no? Uh, or delivery, rather? Yeah, I mean, I try not to, but I do. I like Me once too. a week, right? Yeah, like, that's I a do lot. more. But do, yeah. you, do you cook? Uh, my boyfriend cooks. Oh, wow. Yeah. What does he cook? Like, everything. Like, we try to be pretty healthy on the week. Nice. Like, you know, and like, eat, take out or go out on the weekends okay. typically. But like, I don't know. We do like, you know, basic different like types of bowls right like like as if you were a fast casual restaurant but uh-huh. like mexican bowls or like thai we actually make a good pad thai okay i help nice. i'm a sous chef nice yeah. okay good you like yeah. chopping up stuff when you yeah, put exactly. it on the thing do you have exactly. an apron i do i don't wear it um <laughs> my company gave him just as a christmas present a couple years back hey not That's mad very about random it. yeah, yeah it's, just <laughs> like way, it works. it's way too long for me as like a uh, five okay. one person right, it's, like, it's, it's like tripping over it <laughs> I feel like a little toddler in it, but when did you move into your current apartment? Um, July. And you got a yeah, it was a little yeah, expensive we, in July. But we still we like got the the last COVID. last of the COVID. Yeah. Interesting. And you signed a year lease? Two year. Two year. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Um, is the increase pretty big between year one and year two or no? No like increase. 10%. Between no one increase. And two. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Gamed the system. Okay. Um don't terrified for what's going to happen at the end of that year <laughs> at the end of the second year yeah. well you got some time yeah exactly eh, you got I what, earn like a, a lot year and a half yeah left. i gotta like somehow become rich between the now and then I mean, i'm sure you'll figure it out yeah exactly when are you, are you going back to the office at all any plans we started going back we're Ooh. already back two days a week hybrid okay. love a hybrid moment yes um it's good i feel like more social right like i'm you know 
getting fresh air, okay. which I don't always do on a work from home day. So mm-hmm. it's good. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's definitely an adjustment commuting. Yeah. Like, Ugh. Well, where's your office? It's um, downtown. Downtown. Yeah. So you just take the subway down there for the most part? Yeah. Is it nine to five? Yeah, pretty much. Like, give or take. Ten to six. Ten to know. six. Yeah. I feel like those are better hours, maybe. It is. I don't mind it. Yeah. I, I'm cool with it. I, you know, I, I'm a morning person. So especially on work from home day is when I'm not really like, when I'm not really expected to be like communicating with people for my, for my job yeah. until 10. I can take from eight to 10 to write stand up, to film, to edit. Like I really use those hours as like me working on my own personal creative stuff. Then I do, you know, my work. And then sometimes I will work after I'm usually too tired though. Well, so you work out before work or after work? Um, before or on my lunch break. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And nobody bothers you during your lunch break? Like no, you're not getting like, like a bunch of emails or yeah, whatever? It's just like reset. It's just like knowing when during that day I can take my 30 minutes. I'm, a, I'm not working out for a full hour. It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you, um, do you find that your boss or company, and we can edit this part out, yeah. maybe doesn't, um, support your lunch break or hours 10 to six. Cause sometimes people are like work from home. I mean, you're getting emails at 8 PM at night that you're yeah. expected to, um, reply to. My company has honestly been so great. And that's, one well, of I guess we're not editing this part yeah, out. I mean, Perfect. Exactly. <laughs> or no, we'll switch really great are. for good bad. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Just like create a new narrative. Just ruin my, <laughs> get me fired. Uh, no, they really are. They're like, they are really respectful of us as human beings and like the fact that we have lives outside of work. And I think when we went to work from home at first, everyone was like online 24 hours a day because there was nothing else to do, right? That was like, you couldn't go outside at that point. And then they became very clear about like, you should go and take walks during the day, like take your lunch time. And so I think it's really just about like being able to like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Time management. It's being able to, to figure it out. So like, I know I need to do these things today and I know I need to be at these meetings and how I organize my day to get that done. They're not babysitting me. Um, they're also super supportive of all my like content and social media. Oh, really? Yeah. Which is awesome. But why is that? Is it related at all? In terms I mean, of like when you're working on commercials and creative Yeah, ideas. I think, yeah, like the, it's a creative agency. So a lot of people have different sorts of side hustles and, and things that they do. And, and Giant Spoon, that's the name of my company, um, is very, they're just like cool about it. They want us to have lives outside of work. Um, and like, I think they find that like some creative feeds your other creative. And um, I mean, especially like I thought when I started getting brand deals for social, that that was going to be like a problem. I was like, is this going to be conflict of interest? And as long as it's like non-competitive with a client I have, they're like, no, that's great. Go for it. I'm also learning a ton about what it means to work with a creator as a creator. So like if I'm working with a client at my ad agency and they want to do a campaign with creators, I can come in and be like, hey, like you can't really ask a creator to do that because like that's not how we function or like don't forget to do this with creatives. Well, and why, it's why, cool. not, why not though? What, what do you mean? It doesn't work like that. Or just like, yeah, I didn't really say anything of, of substance there, <laughs> but like if say there's like a brief or something and I'm, I'm having a hard time explaining this, but like, I think basically just like, I know what it means to be on both sides of that process to mm. be the brand that's asking people on social to create content yeah. and to be the creator. So I can, when I become the brand, I feel like I just have more of an understanding of, what a creator will be interested in, what kind of information will create the best content, how to best work with creators from that experience. So do you think like giving creators um, like more of a solid idea of what exactly the content is or give creators freedom? Okay. Which is uh, like something that I think, I mean like you've, anybody who watches any kind of content on social media, there are sometimes when your favorite creators get to do an ad and it sounds like someone else wrote it for them. And it's like, this is an ad and you're like swipe like nobody cares um and that's because like a brand is just saying like here say these things and not letting you do your own thing so I don't know it's cool to have been on both sides of it um and like I did like it's cool having experience on set as being behind the camera and now being in front of the camera like there's I just think there's something to to be said for seeing all sides of the process. How selective are you in terms of working with brands? Selective, which I think is 
like that's something I feel having a job, um, like a nine to five, it lets me be selective, right? I don't have to, like, I'm not relying on brand partnerships to pay my rent. So I can do the brand partnerships that feel like a good match for me. So I've definitely turned down brands that if I didn't believe in the brand or, you know, if, if the creative was just something that felt really disconnected from like my type of content, like they wanted, like I don't vlog, right? So if somebody was like, Hey, can you do a vlog? I'd be like, no, that's going to just feel super weird. But if you want a character video, sure. Um, and then there are also brands that like, I just love and I find a way to make it work. Even if it's like, doesn't make any sense. I'm like, I just love this brand and I want to support it. Do you get better deals on TikTok over Instagram because you have a bigger yeah. following on TikTok and TikTok? It's in, I get more deals on TikTok for sure. Um, but how do people reach out to you via to get like a usually via email? Instagram? But it, that's because DMing people on TikTok is like the really wild wild west. Yeah. yeah, it's like, um, like. Instagram does a great job of like filtering out your requests so that like you can like get DMs from people you know and then you get requests and you can like open them and look at them. And I think they just action. started, did they just start doing those parentheses in the corner? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. I, they had like they haven't had that for yes. so long. So it'll tell you like you have 10 requests or whatever. Right. So it's just very easy and like natural to engage with people through Instagram. Totally. DMs. That's how I feel. Like that's how I find like almost everyone exactly. who does the comedy show. Exactly. And it's like, that's, that's how I find new comedians that I want to get to know or like people I want to collab with uh -huh. or anything. Um, but brands will reach out to your Instagram and say, we want yeah. you to post something on your TikTok or do something or th for a TikTok. They'll be like, Hey, what's the best place to reach you? And I give them an email and then everything goes to email. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting. I mean, I'm sure brands have reached out to me on TikTok and I've just missed it. And I'm sure like, you know, followers have reached out to me just to like say something or ask a question or something. And I just, I have no idea. If you're DMing me on TikTok, I've literally Instagram, never seen it. Right. <laughs> like, I just don't know what it is. Um, I don't know. I don't even know where to find your DM requests on mm -hmm. TikTok. So. All right. Yeah. Well, they'll the find you on Instagram or, exactly. your, or your email. Do you give that out publicly I though, or no? I don't give it. Yeah, out Yeah, all I do is shout out my email on here, just for like listener emails. Yeah, That's techjonesworld at gmail dot com. Yeah, if you guys right do have a question, yes, absolutely, Shannon. So before we get out of here, you got anything, any, anything else exciting to tell us, or what? You told us all the exciting no, stuff. No man, all the exciting stuff came out. You're a great. Yes, great questions. Absolutely, you got it all out of me. Shannon Fiedler, everybody, check her out. Please shout out your Instagram and TikTok. Really yeah, quick. you can find me. I'm at Shannon Fiedler thirteen. Okay, cool. We will see you guys on Thursday. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>